In this video, I'm going to demonstrate creating an intercompany transfer using post trans within Excel. First, we're going to post a sales invoice and a purchase invoice into two separate companies from one spreadsheet. Then we're going to move on and demonstrate a one spreadsheet posting two nominal journals into two separate companies. Next, we'll move on to a different principle where we'll use two sheets and the two sheets, one will be a mirror of the other. So one will contain the sales order and the purchase order will be a mirror of the sales order and we'll post that into two separate companies. Of course, this is available for Sage 50 and 200. This example will be for Sage 50, but the principle is entirely the same. Indeed, the examples that come with Sage 200 will be almost identical. Okay, so let's create some intercompany transactions. I'm going to demonstrate this with Sage 50. The principle is entirely the same. The examples for Sage 200 are almost exactly the same. So we've started up Sage 50 here, and you can see we've got three companies. You can see here the three company data files where they're located on my computer. And we have a company name, obviously. Now, what, Sage, what Post-Trans does is it generates a six-letter code for each company based on the name. So it looks down here and it says, okay, that, let's call that Demo01. Now, if there was another demonstration at company, it would be called Demo02. Uh, but say we move on to the next one, that'd be Prac01 and Stat01. Okay, so let's open up Excel and this will all become apparent in a few seconds. So I'm gonna to go to the Post-Trans toolbar and press help. And in help, I'm just gonna type in int for intercompany transfer. And you can see here, we've got several examples. So the first one we're going to pick is the intercompany in one sheet. So let's double click on that. I'm just going to rearrange the screen there. And what have we got here? Okay, so we normally have header values for a transaction. In this one, we've just got a date. So that's applying the transaction date for all the lines below. And of course, you could rearrange that. There's a video training course on how to change the columns. You can add columns to this sheet. The system is very, very flexible. But what we're talking about here is the principle of posting to two separate companies. So let's just expand this hidden region here because we can now see the tag rows. So the tag row is used for post-trans to understand what is in each column. And you can see here we have a tag called TH before switch company. The purpose of this column is to set the company. So we can see here we had demo 01 as our demonstration data, followed by, it's an invoice, the transaction type is SI, followed by the account code, and a whole series of stock items, stock lines with quantities, and the unit price, and the cost. So post-trans will scan down there, the first three rows it will treat for demonstration company and then it will see this code here prac01 and switch to the practice company and post a purchase invoice so it's that simple to switch companies within the sheet let's just squash that up again return back to normal so effectively we have the two transactions now we also have here a unit price and you can see here we have a column and we've pulled through the cost price and all we've done is just copied that down so what you could do is you could create a sales order and simply copy it or you could have formulas that make it or you could create uh, this could come in from a csv file the fact we've actually left blanks here is just for demonstration purposes. Post-trans remembers the previous value, and then as soon as those values change in that column, it uses the new data and obviously switches company. So let's try and post that into Sage 50. So I'm going to press the import button, and you can see there now it's read the first transaction. It's numbered the lines, and uh, there were three stock items on there, so let's just press post. Oh, and we're using the pro version here, so it's offering me to print or email that transaction out. I'm going to cancel that, and of course I could turn that off in system settings. And uh, it's just warning me that the uh, company's already, the user's already in use in that second company, which can happen sometimes if the system isn't closed down properly. So uh, there's my second and uh, my purchase data going into PRAC01. So at the top here, we can see the company it's going into. 
and now we've posted a sales invoice and a purchase invoice into two separate companies. So let's just prove that. Let's just log into the demonstration company. So if we go now to invoices, we should see our invoice at the top here um, for our three stock items. So there we have that side gone in. So now what we need to do is just go into the practice company and we should have a purchase invoice. And there's our purchase invoice gone in with our three lines. So you can see there we easily created a uh, a sales invoice and a purchase invoice into two separate companies. And as I say, the principle is exactly the same in um, Sage 200. Now, one thing I didn't demonstrate is how we arrive at that codes. If we go into system setup, each template, all templates in Post-Trans have a change button here. So we can actually set the company for the whole uh, spreadsheet, as it were. OK, so that sets the whole company there for the whole spreadsheet. Um, but if we go down here, we've got the in-sale searching. So if I press space, I can easily select a different company. And then I could go what transaction type I want. So I can pick from any of these transaction types. So there could be sales orders, a whole multitude of different transactions. Now, if I actually click on the NOM tab, we have another example here which actually posts a nominal journal to two separate companies. Um, let's just clear down the fact it says posted beside. So you can see here we've got demo 01. We've got two sides of the nominal journal, followed by a double-sided entry to practice 01. So again, if I press the import button, you'll see post-trans scans down. There's the first journal going into demo 01. The second into pract the practical practice data so using post trans you can push in just about any kind of transaction into two companies very easily from one spreadsheet okay so let's move on to our next example which is posting a sales and a purchase order using two separate sheets so i'm going to go back to the help button and i'm going to type in here int and just double click on the example that says with two sheets Let's just move that into the center. So this is going to post a sales order and a purchase order into the two separate companies. And we can see down here, we actually have two separate sheets. One's for the sales side, which is a sales order, and one's for a purchase order, denoted by the different transaction type. Of course, we can rearrange this. We can add extra columns, take a few bits and pieces of data away. It's completely flexible. It's not set to this particular format okay so let's explain the sales side what's going to happen when we press that magic import button well post trans will go down it'll read the date it'll read the fact that it's a sales order it'll read the count code and it'll check whether it's in the demonstration company if it's not in the demonstration company already it will switch to it and then it will proceed down here and process all the lines below so we've got four stock items down here now let's just use the in-cell searching to add an extra stock item. So there you can see I just typed key and there was only one match for key. So it filled in the keyboard. But the point is we've got a unit price and we've got a cost price map to this sheet, which we'll see come into play in a second. So it will process this and then it will say it will use this tag here. This is a special tag. It says TH after switch sheet. So after posting, it will force post trans to switch to whatever sheet is named in that cell. In this case, it says purchase. So what happens? Post trans switches to this sheet here to process the purchase order. So the purchase order has a date. Obviously, it's a purchase order, supplier code, ah, and a different company code. So now post trans will say, oh, Right, close demonstration data, switch to the practice data, and then process all the items below. Now, all the items below, if we look in each cell, in fact, if we look at the supplier code, we'll see it references the first sheet, the sales sheet. 
same with the company, same with the stock code, same with the cost, same with the description and the quantity. So effectively what we're doing here on the sales side, all these stock items are being mirrored on the purchase side using simple Excel formula, hence creating the, a mirror image purchase order. The only thing is different or out of kind of sequence is the fact the cost is coming from row K, uh, column K here. You may want zero cost, you can post whatever you wish using your own formula. So it goes down and it will post that transaction. And again, we've still got another after switch uh, tag here that tells it to go back to the sales. Now the sales will have already been posted, so post trans will stop processing. Okay, let's see this in action. Let's press the import button. So post trans now has gone down and scanned the first five lines. And there you can see confirmation of what it's about to post. We can see the fact it's being posted into the demonstration data company. And let's just press post. And we've got the pro version here, so it's offering to print that transaction or email it. I'm going to cancel that. Of course, that could be turned off in system settings if we never want to see that. So now it's saying it's posted five lines. So that sales order's gone in. Indeed, we can see the reference there, SO67. So let's press OK. And now it's switched to the purchase side. So now it's going into the practice company. So we can see there it's calculated the cost price and the VAT, etc. Let's just scroll down and see what else we've got in there. We've got the department list there. And also down below is listing anything that I've used here that's in the pro version. Uh, okay, so let's post that transaction. So now let's put that post PO in. Again, we can print an email. That's a pro feature. Of course, this, the whole part here is pro. And what it's done is it's now switched back to the purchase side. So let's just go back to show the purchase order reference. So now if I log in and out of uh, the various companies, um, I do believe we're already in the practice company, so we should actually have a purchase order. Uh, there's my purchase order. There was the keyboard I added. So we can see that's gone into the practice company. Let's just log into the other company, which was the demonstration data, wasn't it? And we should now see in sales orders, we have indeed got uh, our purchase or uh, sales order. And we added the keyboard there, didn't we? Two of them. So there we can see how we've posted a sales order and a purchase order. Like I say, exactly the same principle is true for Sage 200. It generates a six letter code, uh, which denotes which company. Um, yeah, it's that simple. If you're watching this video from YouTube, to go to our website, simply click on the link in the description below. If you're already on our website, you can scroll down slightly and below this video you'll probably see some related links to associated articles. Let's just show you some of the resources on the website. Switch over, here's the home page. You can see here we have a series of menus at the top and if you allow them to expand, you can see there all the different types of importation or extraction you can use with Post Trans and Sage and also the transactions you can post. Importantly, there's a training section here. If we go to the training section, that describes in detail how to alter a post-trans template using the tags that we briefly discussed in the demonstration. Also on the website is a blog which you can subscribe to, and I thoroughly recommend that, so then you can learn of new functionality and uses of post-trans. Because each of these articles maybe hones in on a particular function, a particular tag, or a particular way of using the product to do a particular um, job. For instance, expanding bill of materials on an order, code searching, protecting templates, importing CSV files, pricing, managing VAT, order currency, you name it, it's all in there. Uh, and that is easily accessible from the software itself. So if I switch back to a template, and this one's an order template, and I've just got the tag window open here on the right but you'll see as I scroll down this one here um, TL description which is the actual product description actually has a blog article so clicking on there takes me to that blog article and 
explains in great detail the implications of using that tag and the many different options, maybe in system setups, alters and behavior of that tag. So hopefully that will help. Also, we have uh, the help button itself on the button bar, which takes you to kind of a context sensitive help um, and also takes you to the training page, which explains how to manipulate and alter that template. And in addition to all that, of course, we have these blue help buttons here, which are easily accessible. They're also in the setup windows within PostTrans. So again, that takes you to a blog article. For instance, this one's about making the cursor follow a certain path. That will then take you to that article and explain how you customize that individual functionality. So there I hope you've seen um, many different functions and um, online resources that we've provided you to enable you to customize PostTrans to create a template to uh, help you or your customers. So I thank you very much for watching this video.